Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and welcome to I Am Loved Church. Good morning. I have a great message for you guys today. God always speaks to me in the morning. The morning is a good time. It's just when everything is refreshed, right? The old yesterday is gone, and today is a new day, for we should rejoice in it. So, here's the message. This is the greatest thing of why people don't move forward in their life. One of the greatest things that holds us back, one of the greatest things that Um, stops us from doing something amazing. One of the greatest fears in the world is what people think about us. There are songs and there are movies and there's constantly reminders of what people think about us. Jesus says, do not look to the left or do not look to the right. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes straight and narrow for the path of life there will lead you in peace and goodness. But if you keep straying and think, keep of these thoughts and straying to the left and right of what others are doing, you will never arrive to your destination. So here's the thing that I want to encourage you with. It's very cold this morning. Is keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep on the narrow path and stop caring about what people think about you. Easier said than done. But how do you do that? You have to read your Bible. And I know I've spoken about this a lot. You have to keep reading your Bible And you have to step out in faith. You have to step out in the small things. If you can't step out in the small things, you won't step out in the greater things. You have to pray against those thoughts that come into your mind about yourself or about what others think about you. You have to keep moving forward. For heaven is just a place of just peace and place of oneness. And that's where God wants you. But if you keep thinking about what others think about you, it always will create some sort of procrastination of why you don't want to step out and move into where you want to be. And you have to stop looking at what other people are doing, talking about what they're doing. Yes, when it's great and amazing, but you have to just stop focusing on other people. Facebook is a terrible way to stop doing that because you're always focusing on what other people are doing and therefore that's coveting. Coveting is when you start to feel lesser or greater than others because you're comparing your lifestyles to one another. When Jesus says you have to keep your hands busy, that's an important thing about work. That's what work is meant to do. And it's also a blessing. Work is a blessing. Some of you guys have a lot of, have a job and you feel valueless or you feel like you always complain and your job sucks. But I'll tell you this much. He who does not work and has idle hands, they are the ones that usually gossip and talk about what everyone else is doing. But I guarantee you, if you read, read your SOPs, read your standards of what you're supposed to do at work, you know, I guarantee you there's something to do. There's always something to do. And that's why your days suck, because you don't actually do things. You don't do anything. You don't set goals and accomplish things. You don't keep your hands busy. You keep your mouths busy. <clears throat> so that's what I want to empower you with today is to just keep busy, not as a form of to measure yourself to doing better than others, but a form of bettering yourself. We're here to grow. We're here to learn about others. Yes, but not coveting others and to learn about ourselves and who we are, and who God made us to be. He made you to be an achiever, an overcomer, not a victim not someone who's judgmental. Judgmental people are just jealous. That's all it is. Condemnation. Judgmental to set you free, I'm making a judgment. To set you free, I'm trying to free you from the burdens that you're carrying. To convict you, to correct you. But judgmental just to condemn you, that is not good. Just to make myself feel more superior than you, that's not good. Or to exalt you and make myself feel more defeated. That's not good either. Both are pride. But to set free, that's what Jesus came to do. He said, I came in this world not to judge it, but to uh, set it free. Um, So one of the greatest things that I 
can teach about and the thing that I'm learning about myself is stop paying attention to what these per- people are doing. If it's bad and measuring myself, pray for them and just move on. Pray for them, help them and move on. We're here to help each other. We're here to grow. We're here to learn. We're here to strive for the be- become the best that we can be for him because he's perfect, you know, to please God, not to please man, you know, to help each other up, to uplift each other. You guys don't have purposes because you're trying to trample on each other and become the king of the hill, which is a pile of bodies that you've stepped on a bunch of people. But that's not the way real life is. It's the way real life is, but that's not the way God in, intended it for. And there's no purpose in that. Once you get to the top, you're just like, ah, and you're alone. And Jesus says, if you want to be great, you have to be a servant. And some of you people, you think that you're leaders, but you don't stand out. You don't, you, you, no one knows who you are. A leader is someone that everyone knows who they are, even if you're hated. Someone who believes in something that's greater than themselves. Who are you guys? You have a message that's so powerful. You want to lead. You want to be an influence to your world. You have to be known. You ha- people have to know who you are in order to be leading anyone. But you're so afraid of what people think about you, you don't stand out. Well, guess what? No, not everyone loves you. Not even everyone likes you. Matter of fact, you probably have more people who will hate you than love you. And if that's holding you back, then you're not a leader. You're a follower. And that's not anything bad to be a follower. For, you, the, for those of you who are followers, follow someone who you inspire to be like. Like I said before, tune into what they're doing. Radio station, television, their social media, whatever they're doing, you know. But if you don't aspire to be like them, then maybe you're a leader. Everyone is copying everybody. But who's the original? Because all I see is copies everywhere. Copy this, copy that. But who are you? But maybe we're all supposed to be originals. Who knows? I believe that God has something in store for you. And he wants you to find out that purpose and find out who you are. But if you're following these blind people and two of you one of you strays off and walks into a ditch would the other not fall in with them you know i i'm here in this place battle mountain it's not the greatest and i'm not knocking on you guys for this some of you guys like to do work at the mines and stuff that's not for me i tried doing the 12 and flipping on and flipping back i didn't like it 12 hours it's i didn't like it it wasn't for me and what if it's not for you what if you're meant to do something else but if you fo- what you focus on is what you think is important and where you're going in life is what you constantly think about. If you constantly think about negativity, guess where your life is going to go? If you constantly think about, you know, other things, that's where your life is going to go. So blessed are those who think about the positive things. Blessed are those who uh, move and walk towards those because wherever your thoughts lead, that's where your feet walk. Wherever you're thinking about, that's where you go. But that's, that's the fall of man, you know? We were connected with God in the beginning. There was no sin in the world. And before we ate of um, the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, we could redefine and rethink for ourselves. Before we ate of that, we were connected with God's thoughts. And he, his thoughts were pure and good and loving all the time. But once we ate of that fruit, psh, we could, our thoughts strayed like sheep. We could go anywhere now, even in the negative, which God never intended. But that's why he said he so loved you that he gave you his spirit to redirect you, your thoughts, to start being more positive. You cannot be a positive person without the Holy Spirit in your life. The Holy Spirit is your comforter when your heart faints. The Holy Spirit is your guide when your mind is led astray. The Holy Spirit reverts you back to the narrow path that you were designed to go on to accomplish the things that God has for you and to live a good and peaceful life. And if you're not following the Holy Spirit, nothing I tell you and no other book can teach you besides the Word of God where you should go and what you should do and how you know how you should feel we were never meant to live a life that is falling apart 
within or without. We were never meant to see death or experience it. But the fact that we are shows us that we've fallen from perfection. But that doesn't mean that it's hopeless. There's hope in the end. In the end, we already win because Jesus already died and resurrected. In the end, we win. But we only win if we follow the Holy Spirit. You are designed with a purpose. You are designed with a calling. And until you start walking in that purpose and walking in that calling and start to align with God's will, you will feel no hope or goodness or purpose or peace in your life. You'll always feel like every day is Groundhog's Day and it's getting worse. <clears throat> so I want to empower you. <clears throat> Step out. Follow the Holy Spirit. Follow God. You know, don't follow your heart because the heart is evil. I know that Disney's, Disney likes to say that, but the heart is very evil, very vile. It cannot be trusted. Follow your heart, the world says. Don't follow your heart. Follow the Holy Spirit. And he'll leave you and lead you into life everlasting, everlasting goodness, everlasting peace, everlasting, just, it's just endless, amazing. So to get on a little bit more, I want to kind of go into leading. Lead, man. Lead. One of the things is I don't see men standing out. Men, this image of this world, the image of the United States is by men. Women are following the men. Even if they have no man or they're a lesbian man, I don't know. They're following the men. They became those things because men aren't being what they're supposed to be and how they were designed to be. I remember when I was in the military and I remember when I worked at this last job that I had where, and I was reading Proverbs this morning and it says, be cautious, my son, of basically this, this, and this, and this, and promiscuous women. And if you don't, your life will fall apart and it'd be terrible. But if you do, your life will be fruitful. And I remember this man talking about why he got a divorce and this and this and that. And I'm this, this power, this, this starts to come up and I start to remember, oh, snap. It's because he wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. It's because he was probably watching pornography, cheating on his wife. That's cheating. Looking at other women, he probably actually slept with another woman. And then he said, oh, my wife cheated on me. But you are the leader. You are the image of God. She's doing what you're imitating. Who are you imitating? That's who she's acting like. And that is what your kids are doing too. Your kids are being you. Your wife is being like you. You have to lead by example. And that is what the world is watching. The world is watching the men Oh, why are the kids so terrible? Why are the, the, the females so terrible? It's because of the men are terrible. And the men are terrible because they are, they're not following God. They're not being the leaders that they were designed to be. Every man that exists and could ever exist is a, is a natural born leader. Whether he goes astray into his wicked, evil desires or whether he starts to walk with the Lord, you are a leader. Every man's a leader. Every man is leading someone. But when are you, man, going to start doing what's right? When are you going to do what's right? When are you going to stand up for truth? Even if you lose your job, even if everyone hates you. These men that I meet today, they're man pleasers. They please each other and they walk into a ditch and wonder why their company fails or their marriage falls apart. And wonder why everything, this world is terrible is because of you. You follow other people. It's because of you. You don't stand up for truth. You're afraid of being judged. You want friends. You want to be liked. Who doesn't? But if that's more important than speaking truth, I want nothing to do with you. And that's why I don't follow you guys. Because I watched you guys. I've watched you from the day I was born. And I know you watched other men too. Everyone aspires to be like someone. And that is your God. That is what you worship. Whether you aspire to be like yourself or whether you aspire to be like this other person, I aspire to be like Jesus. That is my God. 
But who do you aspire to? You claim you aspire to be like Jesus, but do you walk out and do what Jesus does? Or do you sit in your office and do nothing all day? What do you do? Do you sit in the office and tell everyone what to do? Or are you out there with them? Are you leading them into new heights, new horizons? Or are you just a follower? Who's leading your company? Is it you? Or is it your company? Or is it your wife? Or is it this, that, or your children? Or what these people think? Where are the leaders? Where are the men? Because the image of this promiscuous women that I see in the world, the image of the children that I see in the world, they all stem from the root of the man. Where are the men? Where are the God-fearing men? There are none. Why? Why? Because man loves evil more than he loves to do what's right. But I promise you, unless you do what's right, you will never feel satisfied here. I'm not following these people who have terrible marriages. I'm not following you. I'm not following you, you blind people walking into a ditch. You bad teachers. For the crown of a man's uh, life is his to see his grandkids. But so much times I experience and talk to people, people talk to me about how they glorify their truck where they glorify their house, or they glorify how many people they slept with. And they're just completely just evil and just rude and proud about those things. Like, look at this, this is my kingdom, my truck. I have no grandkids, I have no wife. That's what you, that's what you think is valuable? That's terrible. Look at me, how much weed I can smoke. That's terrible. Look at my grandkids. I get to see my grandkids have kids. Oh my gosh. And I'm still married to the same woman. And I'm not knocking if you're trying, if you come from these places and you can, God, if you follow God and do what he says, you can do what's right. Because what's unattractive to me is a nasty, promiscuous, loud, boasting woman and a man who doesn't do what he's designed to do. Some of you guys are on your third, fourth, fifth thousand marriage. It is terrible. And we wonder why our world's falling apart. It's because of us. It's because of you and me. We don't even take care of our own house. How could we take care of the world? And those of you who want to be leaders, you just you gotta go out further. <laughs> You're in your little bubble. You gotta go further. Jesus said, preach the gospel to all nations. He's talking about you. He's not talking about, oh, this evangelist over here or these people over there. He's talking about you. You go into the world and preach the gospel. But how far does your faith go? Your faith goes only as far as your bubble gets. Where are the men? Where are the leaders? You call yourself a leader, you call yourself a man, start stepping out like one. All the people in this world are so terrible. I'll tell you this much and I'll end on this. God said this to Adam. When Adam sinned, this is what God said. He said, where are you? <clears throat> Adam said, I hid because I was afraid because I was naked. I was naked and afraid. God said, who told you that you were naked? The fact that you complain about this world as I am right now is a conviction. And the conviction is, why are you changing the world? Yes. Mm -hmm.